Headlines this week were dominated by manic retail investing inspired by Wall Street bets, short for WSB subreddit. I can't believe how many text messages I've received in the past week regarding Reddit and GameStop and AMC short squeezes. If you need a primer of what happened there and how it started, you can watch my previous video explanations at the link here provided below. Now, recently, a few Twitter users created a silver version of the Reddit post, which got upvoted, meaning ranked higher so the community could see it, to the point that it became major news next to the GameStop post. With that has come a major spike in interest for all things silver, from miners and physical especially, including the crappy juniors. Most dealers are telling me that they are out of stock. And the Vancouver Bullion Exchange, which is on the main floor of our office building, had a lineup down the block like it was an Apple store during an iPhone launch day. This is truly rare, but it does not mean that silver is about to shoot up to 100 bucks an ounce. It's a textbook example of a crowd experiencing FOMO with a major injection. But I want to warn everyone of the dangers of a confirmation bias, and this is a perfect example. You will likely find top posts, tweets, and news stories that confirm what you want to hear. Silver's going to 50 or 100. New silver traders are about to moonshot the price and stick it to the hedge funds and banks. Sounds great, but I have some serious reservations. Silver is a unique market because it's both a store of value and an industrial metal. Nearly 60% of silver is used in industrial applications with the residual sub 40% used in jewelry, silverware, and silver bullion. There's certainly an argument to be made that silver is a precious metal dressed up at night partying and a base metal in the morning with a vicious precious metal hangover from the activities the night before. Silver has no shortage of war and fortune making stories. From the days of the Hunt brothers cornering the silver market to Warren Buffett buying 112 million ounces of silver, calling it for investment purposes rather than outright cornering to the JP Morgan short position. The booms and busts of silver have been truly exceptional, putting the testicular fortitude of even the strongest silver bugs to the test. I like silver just like any other resource investor, but I do like gold more. There's a reason why first place gets gold. When silver booms, it moves fast and swift, but when it busts and there's no bid, it collapses just as hard. I always buy my metals during echoes, which I've talked about many times in the past, and you can read about on this link shown here below. Now, the chart you're looking at is the silver booms and busts in the past. The first big spike was the Hunt brothers cornering the market in the 80s, which the regulators changed the rules on them too, and then busted the market. And then in 2011, on the next big run, the Wall Street establishment, just like the GameStop squeeze that's been grabbing all the headlines the last few weeks, this attempt to liberate the silver markets isn't about fundamentals, profitability, or arbitrage opportunities. It's about sticking it to Wall Street. Few dislike the suits more than me. I'm born and raised in East Vancouver of Dalmatian heritage. I come from an amazing family that had a lot of love and little else financially. I was lucky. I had two tough older brothers that paved the way for me in a neighborhood of majority immigrants like my parents, where literally it was a dog eat dog world. Suits were only worn at weddings and funerals where I grew up. Ironically, most suits, and in a large part their trust fund children, are evolving into champagne socialists, which I equally dislike. You know the type. They went to university, most likely were part of a frat to feel cool and didn't need a part-time job because daddy took care of them, pretended to care about society and pretend to care about the environment, but they drive a Ford Raptor to pretend to be masculine because they lost their masculinity long ago. And they're nothing more than eunuchs parading around as modern corporate citizens. Wow, did I just say that? Hell yeah. Where I come from, you do what's right, regardless if it makes you popular or not. I'm cheering for the retail crew. I've been taking on the suits for years and kicking ass, by the way. And this time, I don't see the WSB, the social media, the Robin Hood crew succeeding on the silver shorts for the following reasons. And I published this previously to my KRO subscribers. No one is betting against them. That's what you have to realize. They lack the capital to bring to the commodity future markets to heal. The asset managers who operate silver-backed exchange traded products, the ETPs, are already way ahead of them and can change the rules legally on them. Unlike GameStop and other companies, silver actually has strong long-term outlook too. Now, silver mining stocks. One of the easiest ways for traders to play the silver squeeze is to target the silver miners. 
most of which have secondary listings on the New York Stock Exchange or even the NASDAQ. These stocks have seen heavy trading action this week. Some stock gains as much as 28%, only to immediately fall back 20% the following day after the silver squeeze started losing steam, essentially giving up the gains. But there are a few reasons what happened to stocks like GameStop and AMC Entertainment won't happen to the silver miners. The chart that you're looking at right now compares the surge in trading volumes of the five largest silver miners against the five largest companies targeted by WSB. You can see that it is not nearly as much volume going to the silver miners. Second, other than first Majestic Silver, there aren't many institutional short positions in the silver miners to squeeze. The table you're looking at right now shows the short interest or think of it as the percentage of shares sold short in the major silver miners is actually quite low when compared to WSB darlings like GameStop or AMC. Lack of short interest means, of course, no short squeeze, which would take away one of WSB's supposed driving forces behind a major share price run-up. I'm shocked that nobody's written about this. When you look at my close friend, Chairman of uh, Pan American Silver, Ross Beatty, the short percentage, the short interest on his company is only 1.5% of their outstanding shares. Compare that to GameStop, which at the time of this publication was 121%. Now, that's 21% more than 100% of their shares outstanding. So think about that. So get to know the silver futures market. This past Monday, silver prices surged to an eight-year high of over $30 an ounce. While many would quick to attribute this to WSB and retail crowds shifting their focus from stocks to commodity futures, this simply wasn't the case to hold. The very next day, silver plummeted as professional traders started taking profits, and the CME raised the maintenance margins on standard silver contracts by almost 18%. The Wall Street pros had effectively crowded out the novice retails by stirring up price action to overbought levels and driving up the volatility. Then they changed the rules. The posters on WSB appeared to capitulate, warning their followers to stop trading silver futures. Unlike buying stocks, trading in commodity futures poses much higher barriers of entry to the retail trading crowd. For silver products traded on the CME, these barriers include high initial margins and maintenance margins, for example, $15,000 for standard silver futures for physical delivery of 5,000 ounces. The complexity of instruments being traded and their high degree of leverage to the underlying commodity. At $30 an ounce, the standard contract stipulates delivery of 5,000 ounces of physical silver of at least 99.5% purity. As a buyer, unless you offset this contract by selling an equivalent futures contract at a forward month, you're on the hook for, the number is 150 grand. Market access is more complicated. Futures can't be traded at all on Robinhood, and they can't be traded commission-free on most other brokerages. In short, you cannot simply open an account with $1,400 balance and start day trading silver futures and become a stud in the market. Even the micro silver contracts have an initial margin requirement of $3,080 and a contract size of 1,000 ounces. But remember, that's before they change the rules, and if they change the rule, then you need more margin or you have to sell. These financial instruments are outside the reach of most investors who don't have at least a hundred grand allocated to trade exclusively in futures. In fact, the CFTC doesn't require exchanges to report positions held by ind individual traders because the dollar value of these positions makes up such a small proportion of the futures market. In the latest COT report or the Commitment of Traders report, over 80% of the long positions were held by producers, industrial users, swap dealers, hedge funds, and the like. As we can see in the chart that you're looking at right now, these hedge funds classified as managed money have been net long since June 2019. The CFTC reported a net increase in these spet long positions last Tuesday, long before silver squeeze was trending. Always look at the data. The chart below shows the notional value of all the open futures contracts for silver on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, for the last 40 years. As of January 29th of this year, this value was $21.4 billion, of which $9.4 billion, or 44%, was attributable to hedge funds. In other words, it's the total value of the silver currently being traded on the CME. That's the chart you're looking at right now. There's the notional value of the silver market in Chicago. 
Note that the notional value of the futures market does not reflect the dollar value of the futures. This is because most traders who are long, meaning they're buyers, never take physical delivery of the metal, but instead offset their positions by selling next month's contract. Those who are short sellers will avoid having to deliver the silver by buying next month's contract. Since producers and merchants are currently on the short side of the trade, it's the hedge funds who are going long and driving the recent surge in silver future prices. With the value of the silver being traded on the CME and inventories worth $40 billion, retail investors would barely move the needle. I know it's not what you wanna hear, but that's what the numbers say. This is part of the battle takes place on the front of that main street can barely even step foot into, let alone hope to win that battle. The reason that silver can make big moves really fast is because the market cap is tiny on a global perspective. The chart I put together here for you shows the market cap of the global gold and silver industries compared to others. On the far left, that barely you see it, the silver mining industry is about 22 and a half billion. It's Gold mining industry is 456 billion. Tesla is bigger than both gold and silver combined. The cryptocurrencies now are bigger than both gold and silver combined. Cryptocurrencies are touching a trillion dollars. I would say some caution there. Some of my buddies are doing some really interesting things there. The US oil and gas industries over a trillion and Apple's over two trillion to put things into perspective. Because of this massive demand for silver and with the mainstream crowd and a whole new millennial generation waking up to the fact that silver can be a real asset, there's a big appetite to put money into passive funds. We've just witnessed the largest inflow since the summer when gold broke $2,000 and silver was touching $30 an ounce. This is the weekly silver ETP fund flows that you're looking at right now. And we see that in January it was the largest weekly inflow in six months but last July was bigger. And to be clear, there isn't an excessive amount of short interest in funds like SLV, which had less than 4% short interest at the time of writing. The silver linings playbook. Hedge funds aren't going to get squeezed in this. And asset managers who run these ETPs like BlackRock or Sprott will be just fine. That is, unless the ringleaders on the WSB can somehow find a way to control the silver bullion market. And to do that, you're gonna need hundreds of billions of dollars to do that. Furthermore, it looks like asset managers are well ahead of the curve. Over a week before WSB decided to shift its attention to Silver Squeeze, the guys at BlackRock, Sprott, and Aberdeen Standard, to name a few, had the foresight to add almost 600 million to their silver ETP holdings. This was the largest weekly inflow reported in the last six months. To put this further into perspective, on January 20th, SLV reported 500 million in daily inflows, the highest BlackRock reported in seven years. And that was just before the WSB movement on silver. Interesting. Connecting dots. This was two days before the New York Stock Exchange halted trading on GameStop Corp and the phrase short squeeze became ingrained in everyone's consciousness. Nobody dislikes the short funds more than I do. I've openly talked about and taken on some of the large short funds in the past. But to truly cripple the shorts in the silver sector, over 200 million ounces will need to be purchased for the synthetic derivative and paper contracts to be exposed. That's over $6 billion in new silver demand purchased and requested for delivery. And that's very different from increasing the market cap of a company by $6 billion. To purchase the silver and cripple the synthetic market manipulator, $6 billion in actual silver purchases, demanding delivery would be required to come in from the outside sources in a very short period of time. That's a big buy ticket and very different than bringing in a couple of hundred million dollars of buying volume to take GME from a billion dollar market cap to $22 billion market cap. And don't forget about junk silver. In addition, unlike in the equity markets, even if WSB were successful with their silver purchases for that first $6 billion to rattle the markets, you can expect millions upon millions of ounces of junk silver to come off the shelves and hit the market. That includes anything and everything from the champagne socialist silverware to coins, which would require new funds to absorb the new supply. And while many online bullion dealers are reportedly overwhelmed trying to keep up with the surge in retail demand, their supplies represent a tiny fraction of the bullion supply that goes through the LME or the CME. 
On top of that, the market ready stockpiles of silver, the kind stocked by wholesalers, are three times average daily futures volume. Silver can do it all. Remember, silver just isn't a precious metal, it's primarily an industrial metal. In the last 10 years, the value of annual silver production has been worth anywhere from 16 billion to 36 billion, according to Metals Focus. Nearly 60% of annual global silver consumption goes towards industrial fabrication and similar uses. And less than 20% of the demand is made up by investment products like bars and coins. So even if there's a shortage of silver coins and bullion, there's still plenty of silver and other forms going around. There's no doubt that retail investors in their largest insurgent efforts are driving up the share prices of silver ETPs and silver miners, no doubt. But they aren't the ones driving up bullion prices. I still think we're just in the early stages of an upcoming silver bull market. That was the case even before all these short squeezes and shenanigans, and my thesis remains unchanged. Retail investors have proven they're a force to be reckoned with and keep the momentum going. So powerful, in fact, that Robinhood had to band together with other brokers and banks like Interactive Brokers, Charles Schwab, and TD Ameritrade to put a block on more buying on GME stock. So much for a free market, eh? As a result, all of these brokerages are facing multiple lawsuits. Robinhood, in particular, has been hit with dozens by angry WSB members, and their CEO, Vlad Tenev, is expected to testify before the House Financial Services Committee in two weeks' time. But however that ends up settling, silver is a different beast, as I've explained. With the forces at play in the silver markets, WSB will be hard pressed to be able to do much more than bump silver miner SLV prices. And in almost all cases, that bump has already been reversed. Wall Street bets needn't worry, however. Even without their help, silver is poised for the run of a lifetime. Me and my Katusa Resource Opportunity subscribers are already taking on the establishment and old ways of doing things. The walls are opening up for a new generation of people and a new way of investing. Yes, if you grew up in that immigrant neighborhood or on the, the wrong side of the railroad tracks, you can too become a player in this sector. The moat around opportunities formerly reserved for the ultra-connected are coming down. And our army of alligators is growing in size and in capital. Everyone from college students to very high net worth family offices and all in between. Stay well.